Hey, good morning everyone at B1C. This is Miss Wust. I'm happy that you're watching. We're going to look at chapter four, Living Things and Their Environment. And it starts in your textbook on page 52. So we start with 4.1. This is the lesson for today. And uh, it's on page 52. It's called Habitats. All right, now, if you don't have it already, take your notebook with you and a pen, open it up and write down 4.1 Habitats. By the way, you can pause this video anytime and so you can copy the words. So the words are habitat and climate. A habitat is a place where a plant or animal lives. So that could be a forest or a desert or the ocean, for instance. And climate is the weather in a large area, such as a habitat. So that means that um, it's not just the weather in um, Hofdorp, but it's the weather in a very large area. So like the climate in uh, Europe or the climate in um, Africa, North Africa or Southern Africa, something like that. So the situation is that in different habitats, you have different conditions. In Dutch, that means omstandigheden. So you could have a hot, a wet or a dry or a cold climate. And that means that the organisms that live there, for instance, the plants are all different because they depend on the type of climate. So some plants are fast growers. If there's lots of water, for instance, and lots of sunshine, for instance, in a rainforest, or some plants are slow growing, just like in a desert where there's lots of sunshine, but hey, there's not, not a lot of water. And of course, animals and plants also depend on food. So in some climates, there's more food because there are more plants. And in some climates, there is not enough food because there is not enough plants. So animals have to adapt to their habitats. If you need a lot of food and you need a lot of plant food, you cannot really survive in a desert, can you? So that means you have to adapt. You have to change your diet slowly throughout hundreds of thousands of years as a species, not as an individual animal. But slowly, animals then change over time to adapt to their climate, to their habitat. And that means adapt means aanpassen. Now let's look at some habitats. I already mentioned the rainforest. The food usually is found in the rain in the treetops. And uh, since there are gaps between the trees, animals have adapted to that situation. So if you look at the orangutan, uh, you can see that it has long arms, uh, its, its feet are like hands, and its eyes face forward. So that means that you can see um, that it is adapted, because the long, long arms, it can uh, jump between the different trees. Um, it can use its feet to grab, you know, branches and its eyes face forward because it needs to see where to jump to and has to kind of guess the distance between the trees. And you cannot do that when your eyes are on the side, right? Okay, now if you look at a frog also lives in the rainforest, it's also perfectly adapted to um, the rainforest because it has suckers in its fingers and toes and it has webs between the toes so that it can actually almost fly when it jumps from tree to tree. Can you look at the picture? You can see that. So that is a perfect adaptation to living in the rainforest. If you live in the desert, however, you know that food and water is not, well, there's not a lot of it. So there are small amounts and there's also high temperatures. So what does that mean for another type of frog like the water holding frog. You can also see a picture of it in your book. Now, this water holding frog has adapted to be able to live underground. And so the rain 
Uh, when the rain starts falling, it grows and it fills its bladder. Dat is een blaas, een, een soort zak, zeg maar, in zijn lichaam. And it fills it with water. So then it has all the water it, it needs for a long time. So when the rain stops and it becomes dry again, he still has a lot of water. You're very smart, don't you think? Then there's the camel and the oryx, two other animals that are perfectly adapted to the environment. And you can see the oryx, there's a picture of it in your book. Um, now, both of these animals can survive for a very long time without drinking. And they can walk long distances to look for food and water without dying. Now, if you look at an oryx, just have a look at it in your textbook. You can also see that the way it's built is a way that is an adaptation. You know, the whole body shape really is an adaptation, right? If you think about the frog in a rainforest, the fingers were like webs. Well, that's a body part that has adapted to the um, habitat of the rainforest. Now, this oryx has adapted to the desert. It moves around at night to feed. It uh, has this large body that heats up really slowly so that it doesn't get too hot. He uh, doesn't really sweat, so he keeps all the water inside his body. That's the smart thing. Then also, he stands in breezes. That means he stands in the wind on top of the dunes, and so that he can cool down. And his feet are very wide, and that means it doesn't sink into the sand. If you have very wide feet, you sort of uh, divide your weight over your whole feet, like it's really wide. So that means that you don't sink. If your feet are like a little point, then you will sink into the uh, sand really quickly. So his feet are very wide. And also he has, and this is a bit of gross, but well, you know, it's the truth. Uh, his urine is concentrated and his feces, that means his poop is dry. Now, his urine is concentrated means that there's not a lot of water in his urine and perfectly wonderful because he then doesn't lose a lot of water. And also his poop is dry so that he doesn't lose water. So all of these things together are a very good example of how an animal can adapt to a habitat such as a desert. And here we see the camel. This is a second um, example. And if you look at it, what do you think? How is it suited to live in the desert? Well, I can think of some things. For instance, he has long eyelashes to protect eyes from the sand. So, you know, eyelashes, vimpers. He also has flat padded feet. Remember the oryx? He's got the same type of feet to protect from heat and stop slipping in the sand. He also has fur to protect against sunburn and he has nostrils, that means neusgaten, that close to protect from the sand so that the sand doesn't blow into his nose. And he also has his hump. And many people think that that is for storing water, but that's not really true. It's mostly stored fat. And that fat gives him energy. If he cannot find any food, then he can use his fat as a battery backup for giving him energy. And then his mouth is almost made of leather, that is leer, that is van je schoenen. Uh, and so that means that it doesn't hurt him when he eats those prickly plants, doornige planten. So we go to the Antarctic. Antarctic, that's the South Pole, and that has long periods of cold and dark where the sun doesn't even come up, and low amounts of food because of that. And so animals that live there in the seas around the Antarctic, that's plankton. You probably have heard of that. Uh, they're microscopic plants. And they really can survive in the oceans because they have adapted to the very cold uh, ocean temperature. There's also krill and fish. And if you haven't seen krill, there's a picture right there in the hand. Those are very, very small uh, organisms. They're made of many cells, though, but you know, they are 
in the millions in uh, in the ocean and they actually make an antifreeze did you know that antifreeze is like a chemical that you can also buy in the stores and you can spray it on the windshields on the windows of your car and then the ice melts and so nothing freezes up well that is inside the body of krill and so they never freeze up that's smart isn't it and then we have penguins and seals and whales and they have thick layers of fat uh, that is nice and warm obviously and they can survive for uh, for months without food oh i see there's a typo in there never mind so they can survive for months without food because the fat remember the camel the camel also stores fat for food and energy well that's what those seals and whales and penguins do as well okay now we're almost at the end of our lesson 4.1 um, you can find uh, these worksheets in Magister. Please print them out and go ahead and uh, work on these worksheets. There's instructions on it, so it's very easy to do. Uh, you probably need some glue and some scissors. Finally, um, as you can see in the study planner, there's also um, the questions in the textbook. You will see that on page 53 in your textbook. So go ahead and answer questions one and two. And then in your workbook, you can answer questions on page 26. Do assignments one, two, and three. And I will come back uh, with the answers uh, probably in a Word document. Okay? Don't remember, don't forget, don't forget to uh, ask questions in the document in Magister. And I will answer them as soon as uh i can so just mail me your questions and i'll answer them this is the end of lesson 4.1 i'll see you soon bye